Hello, and welcome to this introductory video on work. We're going to provide a quick working definition of what work is, no pun intended. And then we're going to go ahead and use it, realizing that work is actually not always done. So we'll figure out, based on our definition, how to determine if work is being done on a system. We'll quickly talk about the concept of network. And then we're going to settle on to one of the most important um, issues that this video will cover, which is the difference between the everyday notion of work and what physics considers to be work. And then we will look at, from that, understanding a little bit more conceptually what work is really telling us. So to motivate all of that, let's think about this question that we've thought about several times already, which is, what is it that a force fundamentally does? And we've seen that Newton tells us that it causes objects to accelerate and change their motion. Then we play around with this notion a little bit, think about momentum, and we realize that we can link forces directly to impulses, which are changes in momentum. And so basically we can say that force actually gives an impulse to some object upon which it acts. And now we're going to introduce this new idea, which is that forces can do work on an object. Notice here that the first two statements are always true. A force will cause an object to accelerate or want to accelerate. And a force will definitely always give some impulse to the object upon which it acts. However, it is not always the case that a force applied to some object will actually do work on that object. And so that is going to be a point as I said, that we'll have to explore when is it that you actually do work. But first, we need to set up the stage by understanding a little bit of what work is. So in physics, work is basically something that happens when you apply a force at least partially in the direction of motion of the object to which you apply the force. So the question becomes, am I, at least in some component of my force acting along that direction of motion. To describe that in terms of equations, we can write this one here, which uses a nice dot product. And that works because remember that dot products are figuring out the projection of one vector onto another. So basically, you can read this as work is the projection of force onto the displacement of the object to which you apply the force. So that delta x there is the displacement the force F is the force that you're applying. You take their dot product, that of course gives you a scalar, and so you end up with a scalar which we call work and I represent by just W. So that definition provides us a starting point for understanding if work is done. In fact, basically it answers the question if um, they're aligned in at least some component is in that same direction as the direction of motion, then work is being done. But we would like to understand positive work and negative work. To understand something about the sign of work being done in this situation, we just need to look at whether or not um, we are in fact aligned or anti-aligned. Because it's one thing to say we're pushing some sense in the same direction, but we could be pushing sort of opposite the motion, or pushing in the same direction as the motion. So if we're pushing in the same direction, we're partially at least aligned with the displacement, then we have positive work. On the other hand, if we're not aligned or we're misaligned, anti-aligned, in that case, then we have negative um, uh, work being done. So we created this um, typical everyday situation in the forces video. And so we've got that same typical everyday situation again. Remember, there's this magnet attached to the wall. There's a metallic box that we're trying to push towards the wall. It's actually working. We're succeeding in moving towards the wall. We've given it some velocity v. Um, there's a spring that's trying to push back. And then we, of course, had gravity acting, a normal force acting, some friction force acting. There was, again, that force of the magnet because this box is metallic. And then, of course, back over there is the force from this rope, which is dragging along some extra box. And, of course, there's our force that we are pushing with. So the question becomes, which of these forces do work? 
And basically, looking at this, it's not so difficult to say which ones are aligned or potentially anti-aligned with um, the velocity vector. In fact, there's only two that are not in that left to right direction. So gravity and the normal force are the only ones that are not doing work in this case. So we can get rid of them. And then we now think, OK, what if I want to know something about the total work done on this object? Well, it's obviously going to be the case that that force does some work, then the applied force does some work, the magnetic force does some work, the um, friction force does some work, and the force by the rope does some work. I could go ahead and individually compute these forces, uh, or rather compute the work done by these forces. So I could take F, dot it into displacement for each one of these individually, and then add them up. But the dot product doesn't care actually about that summation. I can do the summation before, or I can do the summation after. So here, in this, uh, the way I've described it, I'm doing the summation after. I find each individual piece of work and I add them up. But I could also actually just find the net force. I can do the summation first. So if I put all these vectors together, I find the net force. Then I can dot that into the displacement, and I'll find the net work done. Now, to understand the relevance of what work or net work is, we still have a little bit to do. So, towards getting us this conceptual understanding of what work does, let's think a little bit, using just our definition so far, of how our notion of work, in terms of everyday experience, lines up with what physics would call work. So, let's consider a case where we lift something in a box or a book or whatever. So if I'm lifting it, then by definition, the displacement is upward. And the force that I'm applying must be upward in order to get it to move up, because I'm acting against gravity. So my hand must be pushing up as I lift this little um, clicker. It's moving up because I'm providing a force upward. So I can dot those two together. They're aligned. They're both pointing up. Okay, So that has at least partial alignment. That's going to do some work. So thinking a little further, we know that they are in the same direction, and therefore positive work is being done. Now we can think a little bit further. Let's say I'm just going to push this thing to the right. So let's say it's actually resting on the floor, and I'm just pushing a box to the right. So the box, certainly if I'm pushing it to the right and I'm succeeding, then is moving to the right. And in order to make it move to the right, I'm actually applying a force to the right. So again, we are talking about a displacement and a force which are aligned, at, at least partially. So work is definitely being done. And in fact, they're in the same direction. So it's going to be positive. OK. So far, probably not gaining too much insight into the comparison of whether or not this lines up with everyday work. Because so far, it seems like it certainly does. I would have called lifting something or pushing something, having achieved something, I would call that having done work. And so far, physics agrees with us. What about just holding something up? So if I think about this, then maybe initially I'd be tempted to say I'm not really doing much. I'm just kind of holding this here. But, and I won't do it because I don't want to bore you with an hour's worth of video. But if I were to hold this thing for an hour, or even just try to hold my hand like this for an hour, I think you all know that that gets pretty tiring. So probably in everyday experience, you would think, that that should probably count as having done whatever you're calling work. But let's think about this in terms of the physics definition. The force that I'm applying is still against gravity and therefore up. So that's fine. I've got an upward force. But the thing isn't moving. There's no motion whatsoever of this clicker or of my hand. So there's no displacement. That immediately means, with zero displacement, that you cannot possibly be doing work. So no work is being done there. All right, let's look a little bit more. So again, let me just hold this thing here. But then let me start moving to the right. As I start, I'm accelerating it to the right. During that process, while it's speeding up, I've definitely got some displacement happening to the right. And I've got a force that I have to apply in order to make it move to the right. So, and of course, I'm still actually pushing up against gravity. So my force vector 
in order to make that happen is actually a vector that goes like that. So I'm countering gravity, and I'm moving it to the right, accelerating it that direction. But that at least has some part that lines up with the displacement. So yes, I'm doing work. And as I said, it lines up with that direction. It's the same direction. It has a component to the right. Displacement is to the right, so it's positive work. What about now, if I am still carrying this thing and I'm moving it, but I'm moving it with a nice steady speed to the right? So that's the next question. So a steady pace to the right. In that case, am I doing any work? So again, everyday experience, you know that carrying stuff is pretty hard. This is why people need help to move. But let's look at what physics says. So physics says, dot the force with the displacement. Well, in this case, uh, the displacement is clearly to the right. But what is the force? If it's not accelerating to the right, then there's no net force left or right. So am I applying a force to the right, or am I just cruising along? And in fact, I'm just cruising along. So in fact, I'm just applying a force straight up. Straight up does not have any component of force that lines up with the displacement. So in that case, I'm not doing work. And it gets a little bit trickier. So let's ask the question, what happens when I'm, so I initially accelerated, then I carried it steadily. What happens when I'm now slowing down and getting ready to just stop so I can put this thing down? So if I'm slowing down, what am I actually doing? The object wants to move faster. In order to slow it down, I'm actually pushing against the motion. So I've got displacement to the right, but I've got a force which is up to counter gravity and back to the left to actually slow this thing down and make it stop. So, given that, I've got some component of force in the direction of the displacement, so I'm doing work, but I'm pushing in the opposite direction, so I'm doing negative work. And here's where it gets even weirder. The negative work that I do in this last part is actually equal to and opposite the positive work that I do in the first part of the motion. So in carrying something, according to physics, the net work is actually zero or rather the total work done is actually is zero. Which means that at the end of the day, you did some positive work, then some negative work. And so even though you've succeeded in moving the furniture, according to physics, you really haven't done anything. Okay. So physics definition of work is quite different. There is a caveat to this, which is that you have to assume that the height that you are starting and stopping is actually the same. Um, we will see next week, actually, why that is. So in order to really get at the meaning of work, let's take a look at some of these um, results that we just had. So there, we just went through them. I'm not going to repeat it. It's summarized right there. But if you look at this, then you realize that the basic conclusion we can draw is that every time that we were sort of helping the motion along, so something was moving up and we were pushing up, something's moving right and we're pushing right, carrying something to the right and making it speed up to the right, in all of those cases, we seem to actually be doing work. And it was positive work. And if we're carrying a marker but slowing it down, that was negative work. So when we kind of hindered the motion that, one, that was already occurring, that was negative work. So right that now, that's the best conceptual understanding that we're going to have. Positive work means you're helping the motion. Negative work means you're hindering that motion. OK, so now we've come to the end of our video, um, almost. Uh, there's a quick summary of all the things we've talked about. So forces, first off, do many things. And work is just another way of describing what effect a force has on some object. And we'll complete this discussion once we've introduced concepts of energy. So that'll be next week. But we can already start thinking about how to compute work and, and how to use it just by realizing that there's this nice um, shortcut to understanding what's going on. The sign of the work just depends on are we going in the same direction or the opposite direction to the motion that's actually already occurring. And our conceptual understanding of it is simply that if we're doing positive work, we're helping whatever's happening. And if we're doing negative work, we're hindering that. To make sure that this video has actually been helpful and you're understanding what's going on, 
try and think about these questions. So suppose that the work done by one force out of potentially many acting on an object is zero. Could the object be moving? Now a slightly more complicated question. If the net work done on an object is zero, can the object be moving? <laughs>